you guys are actually going to get the ultimate hall pass to explore what life would be like with someone other than your spouse. AKA promoting adultery. But God woke us up this morning. Like I, I had nothing to do with waking up on my own. It was all him. So like when this happened naturally, I was like, okay, God, I trust you completely. You're right. I could care less about what the Christian community thinks of me. I could care less. Kirk Franklin has sold his soul to the devil, and he does not care. How can someone who claims to be a Christian promote a show that brings single men and women to live together and engage in sexual immoralities? Most people don't know when it comes to love, Tam and I are the unofficial matchmakers, and now we'll switch it up the game, bringing our matchmaking expertise to the TV screen. Get naked on the first date. Encouraging people to get naked on the first date, and you don't care what Christians think. I could care less about what the Christian community thinks of me. When you don't care that people hold you accountable for stepping out of line and flagrantly violating the biblical principle of the marriage relationship, it shows that the spirit of pride has taken over you. And Proverbs 16 verse 18 warns that pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. This is what happens when Satan takes over a person and blindfolds them. It is extremely hard for them to see how deep they have fallen. If you care about Kirk, please pray for him. He is lost and desperately needs Jesus. It is impossible for a born-again Christian filled with the Holy Spirit to engage in a reality TV dating show encouraging and promoting sexual immorality. We will share our wisdom when it comes to getting and maintaining a healthy, thriving relationship. It's time to find the one. Do you want to come to the mansion? Me and my girl Tammy, we're going to switch up the game a bit right here. Yeah. We're going to take an eligible bachelor and an eligible bachelorette. They both have struggled to find that special someone. Mm. We're going to make them live together as they both go on a mission to seek and find no, you are not helping them to find love. You are setting them up for marriage disaster. Someone might argue that there is nothing wrong with hosting a show that helps couples find true love. Well, if you look closely at video clips, you would agree that what Kirk Franklin is promoting is not love, but lust. Why should Kirk encourage people to engage in sexual sins before deciding whether to get married or not? Make no mistake, Kirk is mocking God, and he does not seem to care. A relationship not anchored and grounded in the Word of God and devotion to prayer is bound to crumble. If Kirk wants to help single men and women find true love and lasting relationships, he should point them to Jesus Christ, show them how to abstain from sexual sins until they are married, show men how to love their future wives and be the spiritual leader of their homes, leading their future wives and potentially future kids in family devotions, teach the ladies how to honor and support their future husbands. Our culture is desperate to see this from us and hear this from us. Why? Because marriages are falling apart. We have a marital wasteland all around us in our culture. It's not working. And our culture is desperate for some answers. Now, they may not like the answers that we have to give. However, God's the one who designed marriage. He knows how to make it work. In a time when more than 50% of marriages end in divorce, our society does not need another dating show about how to find one's true love. Many secular shows, like Kirk's, claim to help singles find true love, but it does not work. Bring the best singles Atlanta has to offer for dates. Lord have mercy. Activities. <laughs> to see if we can help Brendan Ashley find the one. Let's get this party started. All right, now. I like that. Y'all working hard. If you notice, the focus is mainly on physical appearance and sex. Women dress sensually to seduce men, and men show off their bare bodies to tempt women. Without a doubt, Kirk is being controlled by the spirit of demons. The spirit of lust and all forms of sexual perversion is from Satan, and this dating show is a tool Satan uses to seduce people. When you look at how Kirk Franklin dresses and behaves at times, including his body movement, you can clearly see that something is not right about him. He acts as if he is possessed by a foul spirit. How can you call him a Christian musician when he dances in a sexually provocative manner? Look closely at how these men carried Kirk. Men don't act this way. Then compare his posture in this video with his pose in this photo with the likes of Donnie McClurkin and Marvin Sapp. 
Why is a full-grown man carried weirdly by other full-grown men? It is strange and awkward. Please note that we are not making this video to bash Kirk, but instead we want to alert you, especially those who still follow him, to be aware that Kirk is not who you think he is. Here is the most significant danger. Those who see Kirk as an influential Christian celebrity would believe there is nothing wrong with single men and women engaging in sexual relationships, which the Bible condemns. I definitely think Ashley has feelings for Brent. If you do me the honor. I got a bullet on my back. You don't think I got one on mine? It's a dating experience unlike any other. With shocking twists. I just want you to be aware that it's game out here. That no one saw coming. What the hell was that? <laughs> Let's get it. Do you see how the enemy uses Kirk to expose his followers to sexual sins? We must condemn this unholy and ungodly behavior and not make excuses for Kirk. When Adrian was engaged to her ex, Lenny Santiago, Israel was married to a woman named Melissa. In a since-deleted February 2016 Facebook post, Israel announced that his and Melissa's divorce was finalized and that he committed adultery during their 20-year marriage. Israel made it clear that Adrian was not to blame for his marriage coming to an end because she was a woman of integrity and character. Israel Houghton and his wife Adrian are well-known, quote-unquote, Christian celebrities mocking God by promoting adultery. To explore what life would be like with someone other than your spouse. I am doing my breathing. <sighs> Guys, give me a ring. <laughs> take it up, take it up. Your marriage perhaps doesn't have maybe that fire that it used to have, that fuego, that pasión, you know? Here they come. This experience, I'm hoping, will give a spark back to my husband. I think living with these guys is going to be a fun experience. How do you think your wife would feel about the day? Oh my God. She's 23. It is now your moment of truth. Do you, in fact, have a love for the ages, or will you decide to walk away? In our opinion, this show was far worse and more dangerous than Kirk Franklin's demonic dating show, and here is why. Love for the Ages is a reality show where three couples test the bonds of their marriage by dating younger people. Hosted by Adrian Balin, the series features three Latino couples living together under one roof and with younger and single men and women. As married individuals get to know the singles, they can choose who they want to ask out on a date or with whom they want to get more intimate. Throughout it all, they also have to negotiate their feelings about their respective spouses. At the end of the month, the married folks will decide if they'll stay together or if it's time for each of them to move on to something, or someone, different. It is mind-boggling that people who claim to be Christians would promote this type of dangerous show. If you want to help married couples deal with their marital problems, give them sound biblical counseling and not expose them to lust and adultery. Who knows how many people may have been adversely impacted by watching this demonic show. Please join us in our fight for the truth. Please share our videos, subscribe, like, and comment. We appreciate your help. I'll look men dead in their eye. Go home and love your wife. No, you don't understand. We're just not in love anymore. I didn't ask you to be in love. I said go home and love your wife. The Bible commands you to. Husbands, love your wives. You're commanded to. Well, no, no, you just, I just, no, I just don't feel like that. Okay, fine. The Bible says love your neighbor as yourself. Your wife is your closest neighbor. Go love her because she's your closest neighbor. Yeah, well, she's not even my closest neighbor. I moved out. That's fine. Jesus said, by this all men will know that you're my disciples, that you have love one for another. So love her because she's your sister in Christ. Well, I don't even know if she's saved. That's fine. The Bible says love your enemies. <laughs> it is absolutely inexcusable for a man who follows Christ to stop loving his wife. It's a choice. It's an act of the will. And we walk away because we don't have a biblical worldview. And we say things like, well, I'm just not happy. And I just don't believe that God would want me to stay in a marriage and be unhappy. Are you serious? Let me see if I understand this correctly. Jesus Christ, the spotless, sinless Lamb of God, was crushed and killed for the glory of the Father, but you, he wouldn't want unhappy. You gotta suck it up and go home. <laughs> it is an act of the will. It is a choice. It is accompanied by emotion. Biblical love is not void of emotion. 
And again, I talk to, I hear this from guys all the time. Like they can sell that stuff to me. I'm just not an emotional man. I'm just more of an analytical type. And she wants me to be emotional and I'm just not a very emotional man. That's a lie from the pit of hell. Well, 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 what do you mean? You, I mean, you don't even know me that well, and you're calling me a liar, and I just said I'm not a very emotional man. Why are you upset that I called you a liar if you're not emotional? Because here's another one I know. When you're out on the golf course and you shank one, you don't just stand there and say, I seem to have hit that one poorly. <laughs> you watching the ball game and your team getting beat like a tied-up goat? You don't just sit there and say, they seem to have far more points than we do at this time. Right? And if you went to work tomorrow and your stuff was on the sidewalk with a pink slip, you wouldn't stand there and say, well, I really have enjoyed my tenure. <laughs> a man who looks at his wife and says he's just not emotional is actually saying to her, you don't matter as much as my golf game, my favorite team, or my job. Wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, his body, and is himself its savior. Now, as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit in everything to their husbands. Now, let me say something briefly here about this passage of scripture. Number one, I know that this is perhaps the least popular passage of scripture in the New Testament for many people. And the reason it's not a popular passage of scripture is twofold. Number one, we don't understand what it means and secondly, we don't keep reading. What do you mean we don't keep reading? Here, here's what I want you to do, ladies. I want you to look at that little paragraph right there. It's that little old measly paragraph that has to do with what you're called to do in this context. You show me how big that is in your Bible. About that, it's about that big right there in mine. Anybody, ladies, ladies, what you got? What you got? About that? Okay. Now, look at the next paragraph, which begins, husbands. You see that one, verse 25, where the first word is husbands. Why don't you show me how big that paragraph is? Yeah, yeah. You gotta keep reading. You gotta keep reading. First thing I want you to understand is this, that submission is not a matter of value, it's a matter of order. This is not about the value of women. God is not saying that women are less valuable, men are more valuable, this is a matter of order. Anything with two heads is a monster, amen. You either need to kill it or put it behind glass and charge people to come see it, okay? <laughs> God has called men to headship in marriage. I make no apologies for that, none whatsoever, because I know what that means. And it's not something, I, I assure you, that fills me with pride. Not at all. It's something that overwhelms me, as I understand it, in its context. We have an epidemic of unprotected women in our culture being used and abused by men. That is not the picture that the Bible paints. Here's the other thing I want you to understand. The Bible doesn't say, men, make your women to submit to you. It's not what the Bible teaches. Wives, you submit yourself to your husbands. Which is why I tell young men, I warn young men too. Say, young men, you run across a woman who's not submissive. Well, wait a minute, I thought you said she doesn't have to submit to me. No, she doesn't have to submit to you. Well, then how am I going to know if she's submissive? Watch her with her daddy. Does she honor her mother and her father? Does she submit to her mother and her father? Now, if she does not honor and submit to her mother and her father who gave her life and food, what makes you think she's going to submit to you? So you watch her. And if she won't submit, run. A man who marries an unsubmissive woman will be a miserable man. And here's why. There's nothing you can do to make her submit. If she wants to stand up and be the head, what are you going to do, arm wrestle her for it? You'll be a miserable man. To Kirk Franklin and his wife, and Israel Houghton and Adrian, you must repent before God's judgment comes upon you. The Bible warns in James 4, verse 4, that friendship with the world is enmity with God. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever, therefore, will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God.